Welcome to a partly little satirical broadcast we like to call Mix It Three, everybody. It's a Monday, yay! <laughs> the hour has begun for the week. Yeah. It's Cliff and it's Italian. Welcome. Hope you're doing well. Yes, yeah. And coming off of a busy weekend. A very fun weekend, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> fun, busy, and uh, uh, happy if you're a Chiefs fan or a 49ers fan, but we'll get to that in a second. Yes, yeah. Oh my gosh, I'm lo losing my voice. <laughs> a lot of screaming during the game. <laughs> Probably because I was mad at, before the show started with someone in mass control. But anyways, let's talk about the, the weekend. It all started on Friday. Yes, it did. With the Black Jacket Symphony mm -hmm. playing, um, uh, joining the Escape album. What a fun show oh, and yeah, fun yeah. time that we had. I just want to give a quick shout out to Tina, if you're watching the show. Hi. <laughs> Very nice lady that she, um, I was, uh, I sat down, I was waiting for the show to start, mm -hmm. and then she came with her husband. They were like trying to figure out seats. And then she comes and said, oh, no, I'm going to sit here by her. I know her. I watch her. <laughs> Hi, Tina. Thanks for watching us. <laughs> we, uh, we, we actually have all had seats together. Um, and they were like row V, so like dead center, back from, back from, the, you know, from, the, from the stage, mm -hmm. but also right by, kind of right behind the sound booth, so you know you get the best sound. Yeah. Great mixed show, but uh, I had the honor of uh, introducing, welcoming the band. Yes. Uh, and then I features. got a chance to sit in with them too, but there was no way I was going to make 20 people on either side of us get up. So I never <laughs> even, I never even sat down in my own seat. Uh, but, but, but yeah, we have pictures of you on the stage. Uh, super fun. Oh, I didn't even see these photos. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I yeah. forgot to send it to you. Down there with Rob. Uh, <laughs> yeah. They let me sit in with them again on a tune. Will they ever learn? This is their uh, sixth year coming into to, uh, the area to perform. Journey album, obviously, it, you know, Don't Stop Believing, Separate Ways. I mean, Girl Can't Help It. Yeah. Uh, I mean, all the hits. So many. Uh, and so many people having a good time there. But, yeah, yeah they really did sound amazing. Uh, this is what when they were playing Lights. It is my favorite mm -hmm. song. It, it was so much fun, so much fun. Yeah, it had a good time. And then at the end, we, we took a picture with the, the guitarist and the singer. They yeah, were the, amazing. The bald guy is the singer. Ryan, yeah. And he did, his um, comparison to Steve Perry singing was oh eerily uncanny. Right? Yeah. Yes. Almost spooky. Mm -hmm. And uh, the guitarist there, ooh, Neil Sean, you better watch out. That guy yeah. was playing everything just spot on. So, yeah, good time mm -hmm. for that on Friday. We also have a video of Cliff playing, but, uh, yeah, and you see the packed house. Um, and look at you, jamming with the... Uh, you can't really see. I'm way off in the back there. But, well, uh, but then I zoomed in to make sure yeah, that you know, could a show fun, you. A little fun, the 12-string guitar. <laughs> Play a little triangle. Uh, uh, yeah. you know, have some fun with it, and that's what it was all about. <laughs> and they even let me sing this time. They were really drudging the bottom of the uh, barrel here for that. <laughs> See, I can walk and play at the same time. I got rhythm. Fun times. Fun but times. Uh, yeah, good time for that. And then um, save the date, April 19th. They're coming back mm -hmm. with a Prince Purple uh, Rain album. Yes. That'll be fun, too. You know, the mm -hmm. thing is, when you go to one of these shows at the intermission, they'll, they'll throw up a, a QR code on the stage. Mm -hmm. So you're able to scan it and get the tickets beforehand. They already sold 600 tickets for that show already. I, I saw a lot of people pulling up the cell oh, yeah. phones. It's a cliff. Yeah. That, yeah, I should have seen it. Don't know if I'll be sitting on that. <laughs> Got to figure out what song I wow. would do for that. But yeah, a good time. It was a good time. Um, sorry to one of the ladies, super nice lady. I was in the line waiting to take a picture with the band. And she poked me and said, sorry, I know you're in the line to take a picture with them, but could you please take a picture? And then I, I think I heard her saying, oh, oh, so I thought she wanted me to take a picture of her and her friend. And it turns out she wanted to take a picture of me. So sorry if I looked confused, puzzled, but it was a pleasure to take a picture with you. You got to see that photo now. So if yes. you're out there, send, send it to send us. Send it to us. Send it to us. <laughs> and then, of course, the big thing was Sunday. You had the AFC mm. and the NFC championships. Um, my wife was pleased. Oh, I'm sure she was. Chiefs winning. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 Zayna also pleased. 49ers, 49ers winning. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it was, I had some friends who really wanted the Lions to make it. 
this year. Mm -hmm. Didn't quite happen. Sorry, guys. Next year. Right? Next year. Mm -hmm. Super Bowl matchup now between the Chiefs and the 49ers. Uh, now, if you're hoping to see the game in person, if you're going to actually try to make that trip to Allegiant Stadium in Vegas, you better be prepared to shell out some serious dough. The leading app in sight for last-minute tickets game time, uh, they have released the ticket prices. Okay, so Be sure you're sitting down for this. Yeah, sit down for this. So currently the lowest price to getting seats are available for $9,269 each, including taxes and fees. The top price seats are available for $38,362. Or the price of two tickets to a Taylor Swift concert. Or that. And tickets on Ticketmaster were advertised for as much as $55,000. So uh, for those who can get there, the Super Bowl will air live on CBS February 11th. Okay, yeah. That'll be my case. I'll that, be watching on TV. That would never, <laughs> ever happen at my house. First of all, you've heard that story about there's that one gentleman that has been to every Super Bowl. Mm -hmm, He's yes. not missed one single no, Super One single, Bowl. yeah. Where's this money coming from? He better just be getting the free ticket as, as, as a nice. He's at least spending ten thousand a year with, with that, just for the ticket, not including the cost or flight and hotel and. The taxes alone are five times the price of a regular ticket. So. Good yeah. Word. Yes. That's yeah. a lot I'll of money. I'll be watching it from TV. Thank you very much. Okay, so uh, do you know who will not pay for this much money? Well, Taylor Swift. Of course. But even if she had to pay. <laughs> <laughs> she can't afford all the seats in the stadium. But here's the thing. Taylor has a concert in Japan the day before. So now the question is, will she make it on time for the Super Bowl? Because she said she was going to go. She's, right. she's planning to attend. Right. Okay, so it's a long, a long flight. You see from Japan to Las Vegas. <laughs> you actually put time into this. <laughs> it's a 12 to 14 hour flight. So, okay, so we're breaking down here. Uh, Tokyo, Tokyo is 17 hours ahead of Las Vegas. Right. Okay. Uh, the flight from Tokyo to Las Vegas, okay, 14 hours. Okay. Okay. If she leaves Tokyo at midnight, because that's usually the time that her concerts end. Look at Chris's face. <laughs> Okay, that's 7 a.m. Saturday in Vegas. Okay, remember, set, uh, Vegas is 17 hours before there. Okay, so. It's the day before Tokyo. Tokyo is ahead. You should know this. You just got back from Australia. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So she lands in Las Vegas at 9 p.m. Saturday night. If she leaves Tokyo at right at midnight, do the conversions. That makes plenty of time for her to attend the Super Bowl because the kickoff is at 6 p.m. Uh, 6:30 p.m. on Sunday. So she has time to. Take some, <laughs> take like a full night of sleep, and then gracefully be at the the Super Bowl. Here's a breakdown. So maybe she can make it. What do you think, Cliff? These, I think these numbers are giving me a headache. Is what I think. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So there is a reminder, though. Okay. There will be a temporary flight restriction over uh, the stadium that will be on effect from 2:30 p.m. to 8:30 p.m. Local time on game day. I would expect that. Never. So yeah, they always close right yeah. flights on game day. So girl, you have to fly right after the show because if you leave the next day, then you might get in trouble. I don't think the government will make an exception for for your air, uh, for your flight. She could jump your out of airplane. a plane and parachute into the field. I don't think they would. Care. That would be okay. that would okay. be interesting. Do you remember? I think was who made that uh, Super Bowl entrance a few years ago with. Uh, well, I remember it was uh, Daniel Craig doing it in the Daniel Olympics, Craig. Okay. but that was the Olympics. No, no, no. Someone yeah. made of the Super Bowl. I can't remember now. Who was Katy Perry? I don't know who was she. I think it was Katy Perry. <laughs> okay. Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga. There you go. All you right. So sat yeah. Down, you went through all these hours. All that to say that yeah, she can make it. Oh, well, well, okay. Well, we can just wrap up today's show now, aren't we happy? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, uh, speaking of music, we got a musical treat coming up for you here on Mix It 3. Oh, we're going to be highlighting another local talent. You don't want to miss this musical performance that's next year.
Well, we had a special musical treat today on Morning Mix, and it's, of course, only right we share with our afternoon audience, too. That's right. Paul Hills performed his latest single written by Kathy Lee Gifford and Nashville Hall of Fame's Brett James. Ladies and gentlemen, here's Then Came You. For so many years, I sat in the shadows, only flickering memories around me. Believe in the darkness would never end. Music would never surround me again, and beauty would never astound me again then came you then came you like an angel dancing just the way you do then came you For so many years, I lived in the shadows, only flickering memories inside me. Believe in the sadness would never end. The stars would never shine again. And love would never be mine again then came you then came you like an angel dancing just the way you do you swept into the shadows stepped into my wounded heart that's when I started to feel again. I finally started to heal, and then the idea of love became real again. Only when. into the shadows stepped into my wounded heart that's when I started to feel again I finally started to heal and then suddenly love became real again Just the way you do Then came you Then came you Like a miracle That's too good to be true Then came you That's our pal, pal uh, Paul Hughes performing Then Came You. That's uh, beautiful. Yeah, yeah, very good. Very, very nice. He's got a upcoming three-song EP that's going to be coming out. PaulHughesMusic.com yeah. is where you can get the info when that does come out, all right? That's right. Yeah. All right, uh, coming up, we are speaking with an author about his new book that shines a light on military members, veterans, and first responders. That's next here Mix at 3.
Cody Turner is a firefighter and first responder turned author who now wants to shine a light on things that military members, veterans, and first responders are exposed to. Things that are unimaginable to everyone who has ever seen them. In his book, We Are Alone Together, Turner talks about mental health and how military members, veterans, and first responders cope with the terrible things they have to go through. Check this out. All right, we are talking with veteran and first responder Cody Turner. His book, We Are Alone Together. And Cody, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Cody, you're a, you're, you're a veteran, you're a first responder. Uh, obviously, there's a lot involved with this. What made you want to write this book? It honestly started out as like a journaling kind of thing, a way to be able to, at least on paper, express to myself the things that I was, you know, feeling or thinking after different events. And eventually it turned into more of a storyline that I saw that, you know, maybe I can use those experiences to point out where we can do better for, you know, everybody to my left and right and how we can do better for each other. And that, you know, as well as letting the community know that sometimes and a lot of times it's a lot more than just the lights and the sirens and the parades. It's it can be pretty devastating sometimes. Very true. Very true, very true. So let's talk about the title, We Are Alone Together. So why is that? Well, in the book, I, I talk about when I was getting out of the Army. Um, you know, I was basically given my paperwork and said, best of luck to you. And I wasn't really prepared for that transitional stage back into civilian life and how hard that was. And at the time, I didn't know that other veterans were going through this as they went through that transition. I thought I was kind of, I was actually feeling very weak and demasculated in a lot of ways. And it wasn't until I got older and, you know, had my eyes open to a lot more uh, things that I saw that, you know, it's not just me. In fact, it's a majority of them that go through this very hard transition from having somebody tell you where to be, how to dress, what time to be there to figure it out. True. And... Um, you know, after going through the things I did overseas and then not having anybody more to talk to about it anymore, it, it, it left me feeling very much alone. But then I realized I'm not alone with it. So we are alone together. Kind of seemed like a good fit. That's all true. And unfortunately, a story that you hear all too often uh, for the veterans that are coming home. Now, you discuss how these professions, unfortunately, they're prone to suicide. What did you learn throughout the years about the mental health and trauma? I started noticing that the more we start trying to hold our feelings in and, you know, after we're seeing some of the worst things imaginable, that it, it's going to end up coming out eventually. And how that ends up coming out can be against your family, against your loved ones, against your friends, against your coworkers. And you end up kind of lashing out and others, instead of doing that, they get so fearful, they withdraw. And ultimately, unfortunately, we've had several people that I've known of that have taken their own life because of these things. And the part that I always have to stress is, you know, they might not have died on the call, but they died because of the call. And it's an unfortunate fact that suicides in this field are not deemed as line of duty deaths. Right. So they don't get the same support for the family that a line of duty death would. At most, we might see some generic Facebook post from administration, but you know, it's a thing that people are kind of left to deal with on their own. And that's oh, where yeah. sorry for your loss doesn't cover a lot. No, it doesn't. Unfortunately. So yeah, yeah. Uh, what is the main takeaway you hope that readers will get from your book? So my main takeaway is hoping that there's going to be awareness that not just for, you know, our citizens, and our um, in our public, but also for other first responders who, again, might still be feeling like they're alone in this. Um, that, you know, for the citizenry, they can understand that we're not just driving ambulances and saving kittens out of a tree, sometimes seeing the worst of the worst. And that we're, you know, we're trained to do that. We're, we're, we're very, I mean, our training every single year, it's unrelenting and never ending as long as you're working. And especially on the medical side of things where medicine's always changing. So, you know, first responders are a lot more than just those lights and sirens. The book is We Are Alone Together, and it's written by veteran and first responder Cody Turner, who has the first-hand knowledge about this. Cody, we appreciate the insight. Uh, be sure you can check that book out on Google as well. Uh, Cody, thanks a lot for spending some time with us today and give us, getting us some insight on the book. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me.
And uh, you can find that uh, We Are Alone Together. Uh, that book is available on Amazon. Uh, very nice guy. Mm -hmm. And I tell you what, I mean, he, he really really sends it home for it. Yeah, very yeah. important message for Absolutely. sure. Absolutely. All right, coming up, we've got entertainment news on the way. That is next here on Mix It 3. Don't go anywhere. You know her, you love her. Happy birthday, Oprah. Oprah! <laughs> I had to say that. <laughs> the billionaire, cultural icon, movie star, media mogul. What isn't she not? Right. Uh, she turned 70 years old today. She's one of the few celebs that everyone knows who you're talking about when you just say her first name. It's like Madonna or Cher, right? That's right. Her, her talk show, The Oprah Winfrey Show, ran for 25 seasons, but she says her role as Sophia in 1985's The Color Purple changed everything for her. And get this, just a month ago, Oprah told People Magazine that she doesn't plan to ever retire. Thank you, Oprah, because we need you. <laughs> I can't, that is, wow, that's tough to take into effect. The Color yeah. Purple came out in 1985. 1985, Wow, yeah. okay, well, happy birthday, wow. Oprah. I love Oprah so much, yeah. I, so I'd get you thankful. something, but you're a billionaire. Get it your own self. <laughs> <laughs> well, I saw that she was raining, uh, she was running this morning on the beach. She said, well, the, the most precious gift is health. Yes. So for her birthday? You get health, you get health, everybody gets health. Okay, good. <laughs> Moving on to music news now, uh, legendary singer-songwriter Joni Mitchell will take the stage of the Grammy Awards Sunday as a performer for the first time at age 80. She's been added to the star-studded performance lineup that includes Dua Lipa, Burner Boy, Billie Eilish, Olivia Rodrigo, Travis Scott, U2, Luke Combs, and Billy Joel, who just is about to release new music. Right. So uh, Mitchell is uh, nominated this year in her, the best folk uh, album category for her 2023 live album, Johnny Mitchell at Newport. The nine-time Grammy winner is best known for her 70s hits, such as Big Yellow Taxi, Blue, Amelia, and Woodstock. The Grammys airs live on CBS and Paramount Plus at 8 p.m. Eastern on Sunday. That's right. Comedian Trevor Noah will be hosting. Uh, uh, Irish rock band U2 will also make history at this year's ceremony. They'll be delivering the awards show's first broadcast performance from the Sphere. Uh, you've heard us talk about that. That's a futuristic entertainment venue shaped like a sphere in yep. uh, Las Vegas with the tickets for that going at a couple mm -hmm. of thousand dollars, too, if you yeah. get a chance to see them. Just had some friends that went to go see it. I'm waiting to hear what their, their review right. about that was. All right, keep me posted. All right, we got Investigate TV Plus coming up next. Hey, it'd be a great Monday, guys. All right, thanks for watching.